Gravel bikes are becoming more and more popular as riders are increasingly looking beyond the road to routes less travelled. And to meet this need, road bikes are effectively evolving to give more comfort, more control, and the ability to ride over anything. What? Like a mountain bike? That's what mountain bikes are invented for. That's what mountain bikers do. Well, that, that is a fair point, Neil, but is a mountain bike actually the best tool for the job? What can a gravel bike do better? Can a gravel bike do anything better off-road, in fact? I have a feeling it probably can, but with the help of these two hand-built titanium bikes from Moots and 200 kilometers of epic Iceland gravel, we're gonna find out. We will find out, but it could be quite a challenge. Iceland is a remote and inhospitable island in the North Atlantic. There is road riding here. You could do a lap of the island in a week or so, or perhaps explore the Northwest Fjords. But to really make the most of the very short summer season, we're heading for the Highlands, a land of glaciers and volcanoes. Our route is split over two days, but with the weather hovering at around about freezing, and the fact that there is no guarantee that it will even stay as warm as that overnight, we're going to aim for a remote hut for our nighttime stop, rather than sleeping in a hedge. Sorry. But I actually also don't really feel very qualified to head off into the wilderness, given my still very limited experience. Hence, the support from Neil Donoghue, who you will no doubt recognise from our sister mountain bike channel, GMBN. As well as being an ace mountain biker, Neil is also an experienced bike packer. Yes, yeah, so I travelled for years, packed my bike into loads of bags. Oh, I see what you mean. Now I get it. And I've already done it once. I went to Wales with Blake. It was great. We stopped in pubs every half an hour. Oh, we God. only rode 50 miles in two days. Right. Well, we've got a pretty good idea of what's in store as well, don't we? We consulted with the local experts. We then plotted and planned our route on Kamut, where it's given us the breakdown. Apparently, 40% of this route is on gravel, 60% is unsurfaced, and interestingly, 284 metres are on tarmac. Boom. Now, they've classed it as a mountain bike ride, but when you try and investigate a little bit more closely using Google satellite imagery, well, frankly, it just looks terrifying. But cold would be a problem for both bikes, or at least both cyclists. What I'm worried about is if it gets too rough and too rocky, then I could well come unstuck on this gravel bike, whereas Neil is going to absolutely fly on his fat bike. Fat bike? It's not a fat bike, sorry, it's a plus bike. Oh, sorry, mate. Plus uh, it's going to be great when the going gets rough, for sure. I'm going to have to bomb down them. When it comes to the gravel roads, or should we say even volcanic ash that's been compacted roads, I think I'm going to struggle a little bit. Be a lot slower rolling than your tyres, and actually 200k could feel like 400k. Ooh, 400k. That's quite, that's a long way, Neil. Good luck with that. And so the adventure starts, conveniently at the highest point of our whole ride at 920 metres above sea level. If nothing else, you've got to say, mountain bikers know the value of gravity. It does, however, mean that it's really, really cold. We're on the snow line and we can see our nice warm support vehicle disappearing off into the distance. Shall we? Let's do it, mate. <laughs> you lead on, fatty. Where we go, that way? It's plus bike size. It's a bad plus bike. Whoa. That's called artisan water back home.
We can't go too far into this video without addressing the burning question of just what a gravel bike actually is. Now, unfortunately, there is no easy answer, but I think they have to have drop handlebars. They have to have tires that are thinner than a mountain bike tires. And the geometry of the bike, so the combination of angles and dimensions of the tubes, has to bear a resemblance to a road bike. This moots looks kind of like a road bike, doesn't it? Although when you look closer, the chainstays are quite a bit longer and the front end is a little bit more relaxed. And both of those combine to give a bike that has a lot more control, a lot more fun, in fact, when you're riding fast in loose conditions. But yeah, it is a long way from a mountain bike. Although, you've got to say, actually, that there is a lot of tech here that comes straight from mountain biking. So the wheels, they are tubeless compatible, which means that we can run less pressure in our tires and we still reduce the risk of punctures. And then although those Reynolds Carbon ATR rims have a similar silhouette for us roadies, I mean, they're 40 millimeters deep, the fact that the internal width of them is so broad to support that wider tire, that's tech that comes straight from the mountain bike world. Just like the disc brakes, straight from mountain bikes. Even the rear derailleur borrows technology from Shimano's mountain bike group says. This is the Ultegra RX, and it has a clutch mechanism on there, which is designed to keep the chain under control when you're bouncing around over bumpy ground. But yeah, despite all of that mountain bike influence, like I said at the beginning, it is still very much like a road bike. It feels fast, it feels agile, it feels responsive like a road bike, it's just more capable. Well, what about this mountain bike? Uh, this is a Moots Mountaineer YBB. It's hardtail, but not hardtail. It's actually a soft tail. So no pivots on the back of this bike. You've just got flex in this titanium frame, that damper on the back just to smooth those things out. A proper adventure bike. These Reynolds Black Label 27.5 plus wheels on here. Actually, the inner width of these are 40, but the actual external width of this is 45 millimeters, the same as size tires. So I've got some 2.6 inch tires on here, but actually really nimble and surprisingly good. Really good for taking out the bumps on these gravel trails. How was it? Fresh. Did you get warm? <sighs> Let's pedal. Sitting on the front. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Oh my god, it looks so good. Go on, mate. Off you get. We've been descending for what feels like ages on a fairly rough mix of either super smooth tracks yeah. or some pretty gnarly rocky stuff. But I think I love it. our turning is just here, Neil, on the right. I think this is our hiking trail, mate. Oh, yeah. Do you want to stop and double check? I've got yeah. the app on my phone. Yeah, good plan. How are you finding it, Neil, on that? We're pretty much halfway through now. Yeah. I think. But to be honest, I've sort of forgotten about a bike. I was looking at the breathtaking scenery. but. <laughs> I love bombing those descents, those like double tracks and they're going like that. Oh my God, it's amazing. And the grip and the comfort, struggling slightly compared to your bike on the climbs, but not massively. No, no, it's funny actually. They don't really feel like they're not evenly matched. Inevitably, probably because you're a better downhiller anyway, <laughs> but you're bombing the descents, whereas I'm running out of gears a bit on the climb, so yeah. I'm gapping you a bit there. But actually, given how different the bikes are, yeah, it's quite easy to have quite a sociable ride, isn't it? I can see a hut over there. Do you reckon there's the Starbucks or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Although, Neil, we do know that there is not a single McDonald's in the whole of Iceland. I did know that, yeah. This thing's cyclocross.
do you reckon then, Si? We've seen a variety of scenery. It's changed a lot. The trails have as well, haven't they, really? They have, and you know what? It's been perfect, because I think we've seen the strengths of the gravel bike and the strengths of your mountain bike already. Like, this one does get overfaced when it's really rocky, but yeah. I've been giving it a lot of thought, because as I see you disappearing off into the distance, I kind of think, well, like, you're going faster, but I reckon you're probably having the same amount of fun. True, yeah. Just because this is slower, it doesn't mean you know, like, I have to go slower to pick my way through rocks and stuff. But actually, I'm on the limit still, so it's kind of, I'm still getting the same kind of, the same vibes that you're getting, maybe? Some of these gravel trails and, like, the double tracks and riding have been surprisingly really good fun, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And some of that single track is, well, it's not sand, is it? It must be volcanic dust, but it's soft, and I feel like I'm floating nicely over the top, really enjoying it, where you must be digging in a little bit. Yeah, it's... It's, I'm getting a bit of cyclocross yeah. reminiscing. I've got some good shots from this of you going sideways <laughs> and almost going over the bars. <laughs> the scenery like, can't be real sometimes. No. I'm shaking my head at it. Cut it pretty fine in the end, didn't we? <laughs> I tell you what, mate, that looks like a pretty banging hut. Could do that, just didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at this place. So, oh, so good. Cheers. Right, day two coming up. Once again, Iceland has come up trumps for the weather, although looks might be slightly deceiving, it's bitterly cold this morning. Although well, having said that, we had an amazing night's sleep in that hut just next to us there. Now, according to Kamut, today is a little bit shorter than yesterday, which given all the filming we did, we finished properly late yesterday. So that's a bit of a bonus, just 63 kilometers. And also this is a little bit less technical. So probably gonna go in the favor of the gravel bike as opposed to yesterday's three star technical difficulty. This is just one star. And then otherwise we are entirely off road on gravel or unpaved roads. So potentially a little bit more of that lava field dust action, which we had yesterday. So I can't wait to get started, to be honest with you. Right, Neil, shall we? We shall.
last river we'll see today, so I say two of these should do us right, should it? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Like, it's so dry, like the, the trails are dry, like the air is dry, but yet, like it rains a lot here. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, so anyway, we're going through quite a bit of water, even though it's cold. We're fortunate. I think it's the two driest days I've had in ages, and we're here to ride. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Man, you know when you just feel like you've struck it so lucky? There's basically no point coming back to Iceland. It's never going to be this good again. come all the way to Iceland, ride for a couple hundred kilometres and not talk about geology. So bear with me for one minute. Behind me, those rocks there, they're probably going to be younger than many of you watching at home. That is magma that cooled in 1970 and it erupted from that mountain behind us, which is actually Iceland's most active volcano, Hekla. And it erupts like clockwork apparently every 10 years, except it last erupted 12 years ago. So uh, we won't hang around too long. The roads today have been pretty different to yesterday, haven't they, Neil? Yeah, We've had a lot fast. more, yeah, big, wide open gravel tracks and an awful lot more wind. And it's got us thinking about two more really important points, differences between a gravel and a mountain bike. And the first one is position. So this bike has allowed me to pretty much get my road position on it. So I've got quite a big drop between the saddle and the bars. And it's impossible to replicate that position on a mountain bike, isn't it? Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm much more sat up. And when you were towing me in that wind, I, was, I could see over your shoulder most of the time. But it's good. When it comes to riding fast or riding long distances, the fact that you are so much less aerodynamic makes quite a significant difference. You are having to work an awful lot harder, not just because of your fatter tyres, but also because of that wind resistance. And people think about aerodynamics as being about you know pro racing and stuff, but it's not. Yeah. Just riding at 10k an hour into a headwind yeah. makes a difference. And then the other thing is the weight of the bike. A mountain bike is always going to have a weight penalty over a gravel bike. So again, you've got that penalty when climbing as well, and it's also just going to change the way the bike feels, I guess. What the devil is this? Oh, <laughs> Right, so we're in an abandoned pool that Magna, our lovely guys, found us, and it's 42 degrees, I'm boiling. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like swimming in a bath, isn't yeah. it? But before we get too relaxed, I think we should address our initial question, which is, is a mountain bike the best bike for riding off-road? What can a gravel bike do better? Can a gravel bike do anything better? Well, we rode some really varied terrain. First time I've ever ridden gravel roads like that, to be fair, but I just love that bike. For me, at home especially, 
the mountain bike is more versatile. It's a bike that I would choose. It's interesting, you know, you're right. Technically, the more a bike can do, the more versatile it is, because there's nothing stopping it riding on the road. But yeah. what can a gravel bike do better? Gravel bikes can do road better, which I know technically is not off-road, but they can also do simple gravel trails better. And actually, I think they can make simple mountain bike trails more fun too as well, because they yeah. do make things a little bit difficult and they reduce that kind of, the speed that you can sustain. But without a doubt, you know, any time it got technical or downhill, you were absolutely flying past. What I love about that mountain as well is I could swap out the 29 inch wheels. So I can imagine that bike at home on my trails with 29 inch wheels would absolutely fly as well. So it's great, versatile bike. Yeah. What I think was super interesting though, was the fact that we did ride these vastly different bikes yeah. on this incredible ride that touched on loads of different terrain. And actually both of us, we're super happy with the bikes that we were on. Yeah, there were times when you could drop me, there were times when I could drop you, yeah. but actually, at the end of the day, we both had a massive grin in our faces. I loved it. Great experience. I've fallen in love with that bike a little bit. I love it. It's amazing. I wouldn't have chosen a different bike. Yeah, so no surprises then, perhaps, that the mountain bike is better at riding off-road, but where the gravel bike comes into its own, I think, is the variation. So the longer the rides you're doing, and the more of an influence of tarmac and faster, smoother gravel roads, and the less you want to actually do proper mountain biking, the better that bike is. Your mountain bike could not feel like a road bike. Definitely. My gravel bike would be super fun with 28 mil tires on. I'm sure, yeah. Right, I'm just getting a bit of a sweat on <laughs> oh, now, yeah. which has never happened in a swimming pool before. Mm. Uh, do make sure that you head over to GMBN because Neil's got another perspective on our Iceland Epic. Plus, if you head over to the tech channels, yep. there's more info on your Moots Mountaineer, there's more info on my Moots Route 45. So basically, you've got an evening to fill with amazing bike riding videos. Yeah, thumbs up if you like watching us having a great time. <laughs> Ah, this is going to be the least thumbed up video ever, Neil. <laughs>